What's up guys, Doug Polker, and welcome back to video two on my mission to try and make $1.2 million back in YouTube revenue. Uh, it's going great so far. I think I've recouped about $240, so I'm really looking forward to the next uh, rest of my life. Basically, we're going through all of the big hands from the stream I put on at House Casino Live, and this one, uh, your boy's back in there for another beatdown. Uh, I get the pocket aces, the best hand in Element Hold'em. And uh, I look to play a large pot. Let's go ahead and jump into the action. Way better. It's more fun. Punishes the nits and, and VIPs aren't playing out of position. That's the big. most aggressive guy just picked up the number one. Lost out of position. Right, right. The direct, yeah. And Hank has a very strong hand himself. Ace Jack suit is just doing poorly against this one hand. Come on, everyone. Next three minutes, Hank. Our hand begins at 501k with a 3k, 3K ante, so you can see the stakes are rising. We are also playing the uh, stand-up game. So uh, the way this works is if you are the last person to win a pot, then everyone you have to pay everyone $6,000. So you need to make sure that you win a pot before everyone else does. And that does impact the game because people with yellow buttons, like I have in front of me, do not need to win pots. They are safe. The remaining players without yellow buttons do need to win a pot. They are not safe. This contributes to more action. At this hand, I believe we have about half the table has buttons, half the table does not. So players, it's getting a little bit short. People recognize they, they got to win a, a hand pretty soon here. Um, so anyway, so the action, uh, Tom Dwan limps in with 10 do suited under the gun, uh, which I don't know what that is, but apparently, I mean, you got to give the guy credit. He's playing some hands. Uh, he does have a button. So there's not even a reason to try and win a pot. I'm a little confused by this, to be honest with you, but whatever. Uh, over to Hank. Hank does not have a button, and he looks down at Ace Jack of Diamonds. A very good hand. It's time to bump this up and try and build a pot. Makes 6K to go. Folds me the small one. I look down at the pocket aces. I'm always going to be 3 betting this hand. Building this pot. Got the nuts. It's time to build this pot, and hopefully someone gets a little spicy here. Maybe Hank <clears throat> tries to put another re-raise to get a button preflop. Either way, Tom Thon gets out of the way, back over to Hank, ace-jack suited. Uh, I think this is a hand that you mainly want to be calling. Uh, every once in a blue moon, you could 4-bet. I like it. I like 4 a bit more in not the stand-up game, because when he 4-bets in the stand-up game, he's just so much more likely to get action, and uh, he's way more likely to face a 5-bet. A 5-bet's pretty, a pretty disastrous scenario for ace-jack suited. So I do like flatting in general, and uh, he does decide to make that the, the call, and we take a flop. The flop comes queen, four, three, rainbow. We got 65,000 in the middle. And I just want to take a moment to say that uh, it would mean a lot to me if you guys could make it only 52 years to 53 years to get unstuck from this and just hit that subscribe button. I'd like to be able to play this game again when I am in my mid 80s. And, uh, you know, if you guys don't subscribe, it might be my mid 90s. So just help me out, hit that subscribe button. And, uh, you know, just a, just a poor, poor YouTuber over here just trying to scrape by it would mean a lot to me if you hit that subscribe button. Okay, back to the action. So 65,000 in the pot and uh, uh, queen 4-3 on the flop. So rainbow flop. This is a board you want to be betting a lot as the pre-flop raiser. Uh, I do decide to go ahead and bet and I bet uh, about one third pot here. Uh, a little bit little bit more actually. I think I might have set a miscount on the pot. But anyway, 23,000 on the flop on queen 4-3 rainbow. And I think this, this makes a lot of sense. I would anticipate Hank to be floating the flop, <coughs> to, to be calling pre-flop with a lot of hands, trying to get out of the stand-up game. And then also considering that we are a million dollars deep, a lot of implied odds here if he hits a big hand, and uh, if he wants to try and make moves post-flop, a lot of opportunities to do so. So this is a pre flop spot where I think you will have a lot of hands, and I think you're going to want to be betting at a high frequency on a board like this where my range is simply much stronger than Hank's is. Uh, also, one other note about my 3-bet range. I think I had 3-bet about the same range as normal. You could argue to go tighter because you're going to get way more action, which is true. Uh, but you could also argue that his raise range is much weaker than normal because of stand-up, which is also true. So I'd probably play relatively normal, maybe slightly tighter because stand-up's going on. Uh, but just something to kind of be thinking about in this hand. Anyway, anyway, we got 23,000. Uh, I will note, I think this hand does <coughs> check on the flop uh, some of the time. But I prefer to check the flop when I have aces without the spade. And you might think, Doug, why does the spade matter? There's a club, a heart, and a diamond on the flop. Well, on this flop, when I have the ace of spades, it's much more likely that he has the back turn up flush draw that can call, like he did here. So that makes me a little bit more likely to want to bet a hand like this and check a hand like uh, ace of hearts, for, ace of hearts, ace of diamonds. 
Either way, I think this hand probably does check every now and then, but does mainly bet, which is why I did the flop. And uh, over to Hank now with the uh, backdoor not flush draw. It's got to at least call. I think every now and then getting in a raise isn't too shabby. Uh, you do block a bunch of the value I could have to bet this flop, like uh, aces, ace-queen, uh, queen-jack suited, jacks, all those kinds of hands uh, that I could have for value in the flop. You block a lot of them, and of course you're going to have some great equity, and you're going to get some reasonable turns to barrel, especially obviously diamonds, but even a king or a ten could be some reasonable buff cards for you as well. Anyway, Hank does decide ultimately just to make the call. Totally fine, and we take a turn. The turn is the eight of diamonds. So now we have $111,000 in the pot. And this is kind of the spot I was telling, talking about in the last hand I reviewed, where I talked about my uh, my big bluff versus Tom Dwan with 5-4 spades. But basically now, when, I, when I'm on this turn, we get a brick turn after banging the flop. Typically speaking, we like to go about two-thirds-ish pot or so. And um, the idea being, we bet the flop high frequency with a lot of hands. On the turn, we bet a smaller range with a bigger size, and we're going to be barreling a decent amount on the river. When I think about hands for value, uh, you definitely want to have all of your uh, hands like king, queen, or better are going to be in here. King, queen might do a bit of checking, but will mainly bet. Uh, ace, queen is going to mainly bet, and then aces and kings are going to be uh, primarily betting. Once again, this aces specifically likes to bet because we do not have a diamond. So on the flop, we like having a spade, but now on the turn, we like not having a diamond because it makes it so he's more likely to have turned a float. <clears throat> with the ace of diamonds in his hand, which is what happened. So you can see a couple of these things in theory land kind of playing out, right? It's kind of cool to see, like, because I had the ace of spades, he actually did it. Or because I didn't have the ace of diamonds, he did have the nut flush, or back to nut flush draw. Because I don't have a diamond, he does have the two diamonds. So there, there is some method to the madness, at least I think, I hope. Uh, and I decided to bet, I think, 80,000 here on the turn. And uh, the action is now uh, over to Hank. I think that in my mind, this flop, the flop was a little bit bigger. Uh, and so I think that's why I bet 81,000. Um, I think this pot was more like 120 when I decided to bet that, I think. Um, tough to always know that you're the pot exactly. Okay, over to Hank. <clears throat> no flush draw. I really like calling here in Hank's shoes. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think that uh, if he calls and he pairs, then his pair outs are going to be pretty clean. If he raises and gets re-raised, it's a disaster. And uh, he ob obviously also has position, so he's going to make sure to realize his equity well on the river if he does call. I think this is a spot you just want to be calling. And I, and I think back to the 5-4 spades hands that we played, right? 5-4 spades hand that we played uh, in the last hand I analyzed, where we raised because our hand was a reasonable buff candidate, unboxed all the stuff, uh, but at the same time, um, I'm, I'm okay if my opponent, you know, re-raises me. So kind of some natural hands here that make sense for that. If uh, Hank wanted to bluff here, you could use a hand like ace-five suited, if you didn't forward that, uh, six-five suited. Uh, that would make a lot of sense. Uh, maybe if he had something that kind of unblocked, um, you know, if he did float like jack ten of clubs on the flop, something like that could make some sense. Although at that point your hand's pretty weak, it's a little bit, it's a little suspect. So uh, you can have, <clears throat> you really do want to have some raises on the turn. I can have eights, I can have pocket eights for sure. Uh, I can have, um, you know, once in a while pocket queens, although that hand will mainly check somewhere. Um, and then I can occasionally have pocket fours and pocket threes, but all of those are kind of unlikely for different reasons. Fours and threes do a good amount of folding preflop. Eights, um, eights does do some flop checking, although I'm pretty likely to bet on the flop. And then queens, queens doesn't like to usually use these really big sizes because then you know you block your opponent's call range. So I can have all those hands. I don't think I have them all that much. So you know I have to recognize that I'm pretty, pretty high up in my range here uh, when I do have the aces with the non-diamond. By the way, I'm looking pretty intense on the left. It was, it was some number of hours ago back when I was feeling a little bit sharper than I am right now. Anyway, okay, so uh, 81,000. Hank does make the call, and we take a river. By the way, I hope you guys don't think these are too long-winded. I just have a lot to say about them, and because there's such huge hands for me, I, I want to give you guys my full analysis. So I know sometimes people will get upset when I talk too much, but definitely going to be talking a lot in these analysis videos. So, you know, you know what you're getting when you, when you tune into the next few that we do. Okay, so river is the nine. The nine. Uh, rather an offsuit nine. And uh, so Jack-10 is now the nuts. He can't really have Jack-10 unless it's Jack-10 diamonds. I can have some Jack-10 suited, right? If I three bet Jack-10 suited, which I'll be doing a good chunk of the time, I'm probably going to mainly bet the flop. And then if I bet the flop, <clears throat> I'm probably going to bet the turn a decent amount of the time. So I do have I do have a good chunk of Jack-10 suited, or, or a reasonable chunk of Jack-10 suited to have the nuts here. Um, I'll never have pocket nines because I'm not going to bet two-thirds pot on the turn with pocket nines. It's kind of suicidal to do so. So I don't have that. I'll occasionally have pocket queens. 
Uh, but you know, I am betting the flop with queens a decent amount. Uh, and then turn, I will I will be betting it some. But queens typically likes to check turn because you block too much of the value. So I occasionally have queens. I'll definitely have a good amount of eights. I'll have a chunk of jack ten. Uh, and then the fours and threes I will occasionally have as well, although those are less likely because those hands may only just fold preflop. So, um, you know, just kind of going through hands that I can have better than aces, right? Kind of setting up the story, if you will, for what I'm going to eventually deal with in this fucking hand. Anyway, all right, so uh, the question is now how much do I bet? Once again, I, uh, you know, and you can see kind of the compounding mistake with my sizes. I thought the pot was a little bigger on the flop, and so every subsequent street is a little bit too big. I think this river bet should have been more like 1, uh, 190, 185. Not not a huge mistake or something, but uh, I just think I bet slightly larger than the strategy I was trying to go for. The river question with ace is, how do we want to play this? Do we want to check and trap, or do we want to bet and get value? I can see some pretty good logic both ways. Um, typically speaking, it's a little better to trap when you have a queen, because when you have a queen, it's more likely that he's on some kind of draw. Or we'll turn something into a bluff. When I have aces, it's much more likely now that he has some kind of pair like king queen. Obviously, you can have ace queen, king queen, queen queen jack suited, or even just queen jack off in, the, in this game. Uh, queen ten suited, probably not queen ten off. Maybe he gets really sticky with a hand like, uh, you know, ace nine of diamonds. Maybe he gets really sticky with a hand like ace four suited. That means that we're also playing the, the stand up game, so he does need to make some like call downs sometimes. So, um, you know, there's not like a ton, a ton of hands that I think I get value from, but didn't raise the flop, didn't raise the turn. So I've got some reasonably good information about his hand. I think it's very likely that he has something like one pair, probably a queen X type holding. Yes, occasionally he will reverse head of nines or queen nine suited, but I think we just have to kind of live with that and go ahead and value bet our hand. Uh, I think this river, you like two thirds pot. I don't think this is a small river size. I don't think you like to block all that much. Um, Basically, you're going to be doing a uh, you know a portion of checking on this river and uh, about two thirds pot when you do decide to bet. At least that's how I would play it. Once you go big on a street, by the way, guys, just a good, a good general rule: you typically don't start using small sizes later unless there's a board change. So if this river was the nine of diamonds, a uh, small bet would make sense. It would make something like 90k. But when it's the nine of hearts, you typically don't like that size all that much. Okay. So um, I decided to go for the 200k pot bet, just praying for a tank call. Because if he tank calls, I win. I'm on my way back to goddamn even. Uh, and he thinks it over for a bit. And I think, okay, nice. This is going good for me. And then I get the bad news. LSG Hank. Or should I call him LFG Hank? Let's fucking go. No. LSG Hank does decide to jam over my river bet. What a goddamn play. I mean, guys, we got it. Before we even get in the analysis here. He basically just jams a million dollars over my river bet with a missed flush draw. I mean, holy goddamn shit. You know, people people were talking about this game first day. Like, oh, it's so so nitty. And obviously the player pool changes that. Um, but man, what a ballsy play. I, I think I think in almost any game, this would be the craziest bluff, right? I mean, this is a sick bluff. He calls the three bet, floats, floats a flop with a backdoor flush draw, calls the backdoor flush draw, and then just rips it over a river bet. My lord. Uh, but there was one other buff that we're going to get to in my probably next video that uh, I think was slightly larger. But back to the hand. So Ace Jack of Diamonds here, <clears throat> it's a it's a not great spot for you. I would fold, and and I'm, I'm I feel pretty good about folding. Having the Jack of Diamonds is nice because <clears throat> you block me from having Jack Ten of Diamonds, but I can have I can have all the Jack Tens, so I don't think that's too relevant. I also think Jack Ten of Diamonds I might go for turn check raise. Kind of pair that with some of the value bets we talked about, like a hand like queens. So, <clears throat> um, I can have jack to diamonds in general. So, you know I don't have that. That's nice. Uh, but, you know, and I'm also unlikely to bluff with the ace of diamonds. <clears throat> because, um, because with that hand, I I'm uh, I block his folds. I'm, I, I'm actually kind of changing my analysis as I go through here. Because one of the nice things for Hank is that um, if I'm going to trap River... Um, if I'm, if I'm going to trap River, I'll mainly check when I have aces, no diamond, to try and let him bluff. It's a little more likely to check River. And aces with the diamond is a little more likely to bet. Because it's less likely he's on a flush draw, more likely I can get paid with a call. So, I mean, the, both of his cards, mildly okay to River bluff. But I just don't think that this is the hand you want to use. I think you need to block some kind of some kind of set, right? <clears throat> you know, I think, I think having an 8 here is really nice. I don't know what 8 that would be, like ace, 8 of clubs. Um, 10 eight of clubs those ones are really nice because you block me from having my main set combo which is eights 
uh, then you also block the straights, or uh, the straight rather, and then um, you know you're less worried about the top set and the bottom of the sets. So um, I think I'd like if he had like ace eight of clubs or ten eight of clubs or jack eight of clubs, I really like that as a bluff. Ace jack of diamonds, there's just not enough properties going for it that make me like it. But Hank has something working for him here, which is <clears throat> when you rip this spot, most people just don't do that. They just don't really go. They, I mean, let's just think about this, guys. He has to ha he has to have a million dollars in front of him with a missed draw, facing aggression, knowing I can have a lot of good hands, and then just put in the million. I'm not trying to boil poker down to just simple stuff like that. We usually do a lot of advanced analysis on this channel, but to be able to do that, you're kind of in a different category of player, and I I, I don't know Hank at all, right? He's just he's just a guy I just met. You know, I, I took a picture with him last year, and now we're playing this pot, so. So when I don't have a read on someone like this, <clears throat> back to what I should do, I try to just play like what I think my optimal strategy would be. We've gone through the hands I can have. I have a chunk of those. Obviously, I'm bet floating my bluffs, but he's he's betting a million dollars here over a 200k bet. I can do a lot of folding for this for this price. He's risking 900 to win <clears throat> the 500 or whatever 600k, 550k. Um, so 570k. So I think I can do. I can fold my bluffs, obviously. I do get to fold some value bets, and I think it's better to fold <clears throat> aces and kings. I think it's better to call with a queen, because if I have a queen, it's less likely he has a hand like pocket queens or queen nine suited. It's not a huge difference, but it's probably something. Um, but you could argue that they're all quite similar. So the question is, how often do I have to call with my aces? <clears throat> and I think the answer is I can do a good chunk of folding. So maybe if I thought a player was really tight, I would always fold. I don't really play like that though. So I kind of just thought it over. I'm folding my bluffs. I don't have that many of the sets and straights. I do need to sometimes call my over pairs. And that's kind of what I'm thinking about as I go through this hand. It's funny, when he first jammed, I thought, oh, I'm obviously folding. And then I thought about it. I'm like, I think I need to call some of these hands sometimes. So I ultimately decided if I call a hand like this 25% of the time, mix in with all the other stronger hands, that if my opponent is bluffing with just hands like he has here, <clears throat> that essentially. I'll deny enough of his bluffs where uh, I'm comfortable with the fact that his bluffs are not making money off me. Or rather the bluffs are indifferent or maybe losing if it's a bad combo. So I decide one out of four times. I, I I don't know, maybe maybe another solver nerd can help me out. Uh, you know, tweet at me at Doug Polk. I love, by the way, I love the solver stuff. If someone's qualified to go through it, you can obviously put bad inputs in. But um, I think one out of four times ended up being a pretty reasonable decision, all things considered, amount of money, the spot, whatever it is. So uh, we do decide to go ahead and flip. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I am going to one out of four times, I'm going to call. Okay. Wow. So I, remember, I got a heart and a spade. I'm going to mix them up. If it's ace of hearts twice in a row, I call. Otherwise, I fold. Wait, wait can I ask a question? Is that binding? Uh, it's 100% binding. If eight hearts twice in a row. Okay. Do you understand, Hank? So Hank can show his hand now. Guys, yeah, you guys. Okay. Doug do whatever. Okay. So Nick, here you go. Okay. So, so if you get spade, I fold. If you get heart, we do it again. Can I do it? You can go. West, West, spade, West, spades West, a fold. They're asking for no one else to be involved. No, in this. I, I understand. Okay. They're telling me. I apologize. Spade, I fold. Heart, like we do it again. I'm not picking. You pick. I have to pick. Okay. Okay. Spades, spades a fold. This is amazing. The the production staff actually doesn't let someone pick my card. I, I don't know if it's just because like you know gaming rules here or whatever it might be, but usually I let someone else pick my card. Uh, but basically, like if it's a heart twice, then it's a call. Anything else is a fold. Uh, before we before we go, uh, I do want to say that Tom kept saying like you know well some people might angle like that, and that might be kind of true in general. But can you guys just imagine in this spot? I'm like okay, it's binding, and he shows his hand, and I call. Like, obviously, I would never do that. So I don't really know what Tom was getting at there by saying, like, you know, you shouldn't do that. But maybe in general, that's true. But I, I think it is a little bit different when it's the person the game is being built around. I played a lot of these shows. Uh, I, I don't think that it, it's too – it's – let me put it like this. If I scammed him like that there, like, I, my my name would be forever tarnished in the book community. I would also just never do that. But, you know, we're on a live – I don't know, just kind of kind of a wild situation to, to even point that out. But w whatever. Um, so I decided to go ahead and uh, flip the cards twice. And unfortunately for me, I get that black ace. And Hank, Hank was pretty, pretty excited about the whole thing. Indeed, I would say. Fold. Show him. Fuck. Fuck. Oh my fuck. Hank. Instant legend. 
props. Hank. Hank. Rampage who? What's up, a fish? Huh? <laughs> it's a fish flap, to be honest. <laughs> no, I broke Jack Diamond. Yep. You blocked Jack 10. My story, 10, 10 Jack Diamond. Good story. Wow. This guy was a late addition to the lineup. What? We got a Doom Zoom, you dug. I think he gets the, the, the stand up game button. <laughs> yeah, Lauren, he can have a Super Game button. What a good sport. A very well played hand from Hank in terms of just putting me to the test and getting it through, and uh, that's that's the problem, guys. You know, sometimes when you're when you're playing big games, your buffs fail, and your big hands, you know, you end up making a lay down that's wrong. So you know, that's poker. It's a tough, tough game. Those are the two biggest pots I played, but we are going to be breaking down the biggest other pots from the stream. If you guys want to see them, remember uh, I am but a struggling YouTuber. Please help me with a with a simple subscribe. It goes a long way towards winning back my 1.2 million dollars. I will see you guys again on the next video. Peace.